New Thought Artists. From Jamie Lula, Karen Drucker, Gary Lynn Floyd, Ricky Byers, Daniel Namod, Eddie Watkins Jr., and many, many more. 24-7 New Thought Radio. Positively inspiring. Welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol Lawrence here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. Now, don't you get ahead of yourself. It sounds like you're starting the actual, uh, oh, the actual well, podcast I, now. No, we're, 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 we're live. Well, we're live on Facebook and YouTube. Oh, this is so surprising. We get to do this differently every time. So, yeah, this is basically this is the pregame where you say hi to all your friends and we can be uh, cash and we haven't started the actual podcast, which is the uh, the pompous and formal part you know, of our I don't program. even mind being slow, right? Because <laughs> we've been going through, but to me, here's me. One o'clock, it starts. Right. Right. One o'clock. Right. But I fail to say one o'clock, it starts the behind the scenes. Right. The to pregame, me, the, whatever this yeah, is. The yeah. To me, one o'clock, it starts. Welcome to. Yep. You know, the quarter of that. I, Dearly we, beloved. Well, yeah, because yeah, we we do three of these. This is like you and me chat for a little while. You and yeah, me. Did I? That I that's, it, there's right? some grammar. So we we talk a little before we go live on the on the the Facebook. And, <laughs> the and I'm YouTube. trying to when I meet you before, you know, I'm trying to keep it clean. <laughs> I'm trying, to, I'm trying to keep it nice, you know, and make anybody mad about anything. So, so now um, I know, you know, I can just like let it rip back there, right? Before one you can o'clock. let it rip. Yes, before one o'clock, you can do whatever you want. That's like backstage green room, and then we come out in front of the live studio audience, and we have this this casual chit chat, and people can put stuff into the comments. Go ahead, put something into the comment, a prayer request, or an observation about uh, the, the the insightful nature of the universe, or whatever. I'll get it by the time you'll change the format and I'll be just now getting it. So whatever. Listen, I'm here. I show up. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's nothing got damaged. No. Which is just perfect. Yeah. And I got some friends that watch and they're going to say, you know what, Lawrence, that is so you. (laughs) (laughs) Is I have always found that it's much better to be on when you don't need to be on than to be off when you're actually on. I have on occasion yeah. said things into a hot microphone, which really I would have preferred not to. Yeah, yeah. So I'll try to watch it because I don't have the controls here, you know. All I can just do is turn the mic on or off or whatever. You don't have the control. We were talking about your control freak card before I that know. you got rid of. You don't have the controls like you used to. You used to now think I'd, that you had the control. In so many ways, I don't have it. Sometimes I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> my first job in radio which was in 1980 i was at nbc in new york and they had most every radio station in the world the, the disc jockey sits there in front of the little console and plays the records and turns the mic on and off plays the commercials and it's just it's a one-man show nbc there's a union so they would not let the talent touch the equipment so i was an engineer and i would play the records and turn the microphone on and off and the rule was, you know, the microphone switch was in the control room. And so the the air personality didn't have the ability to turn his mic on and off. But they did have a cough button. So if the guy had to cough, he could press the button and it would, it would kill the mic. There were almost all of the DJs there, everybody except Imus. <clears throat> when it was time for the, for the, when the record was about to end, they'd hold down the cough button. <laughs> and when the mic got turned on, it wouldn't turn on until they let go of the cough button. So, and in, to the point where some of them, because in the control room you could hear a click mm-hmm. when they hit the cough button, you, you knew, you waited until you heard the click that they were ready for you to turn the mic on because the mic still wasn't on. That's control. I was going to say, that's, <laughs> that's control. That's control. It's not supposed to work that way. We have a rule. You're not allowed to touch the button, but this button does the same thing. I got my button. <laughs> So we're going to do another podcast. 
50 something is what we're up to now hmm. and uh um do you want to talk about what it's going to be about or we just want to go into it yeah well first let me just say this seems like there should have been some kind of celebration you know something yeah. that said there was a year that went by i'm big on celebrating stuff all right well let's but, take some cupcakes out of petty cash well i'll eat cake and stuff all right so yeah. send me a coupon for some sushi that'll be good <laughs> 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 That'll be good. <laughs> uh, do that. I'll see what I can. I'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do. We'll see <laughs> what we can do. All right. I'm going to press the other button. This time we're actually going to start the podcast. And <laughs> okay. when we and when we come back, guess what you're going to say? Welcome to the Practical mm-hmm. Prayer Podcast. <laughs> Just like magic. <laughs> A practical prayer is a prayer that works. These discussions between Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence dive into the details of how it works and how to work it. Reverend Bill is a new thought minister and the author of Practical Prayer for Real Results. Your new life begins with a new thought. Carol Lawrence is on a spiritual quest, finding the new thought teaching after decades on the pulpit in three different traditional denominations. I've got some questions. Together, they're exploring the philosophy and activities that come together from many of the world's religions to create the practical spirituality that is New Thought. Welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. We're going to talk about whatever we Karma. Want about. You want to talk about karma. Yes. Karma. And my joke was that your karma ran over my dogma. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll dispense with that, uh, and we will talk about karma. And we, when you first brought this up, I noted that the, uh, the spiritual tradition, the religion of background that you came from, doesn't really do karma so much not so much um, okay you you reap what you sow mm-hmm. you know, that, that's pretty much it doesn't get much more than that yeah you know um, but i have buddhist friends that i hang out with actually some monks <laughs> okay yeah full and, up with karma yeah and um the explanation is really interesting i mean when you're reading different traditions of course there's to me there's a common thread in all And then there's some little nuances of differences. But uh, the interesting thing about karma, as you said, in my tradition, formerly it was what goes around comes around. You know, you Mm -hmm. do what you sow. Whatever you do to somebody is going to come back to you. But that's pretty much where it stops because there's other things that kind of interfere with that. So rather than to, I think, in my opinion, rather than to just to do a deep dive into it, it just kind of schluff it off and just go into other stuff uh, because it could in fact give the basic beliefs or tenets of the faith a little bit of struggle so you don't do too much with that <laughs> so, run on yeah. come into those things you do the broad brush you don't get into the details because you might notice what's down there in the details yeah that's right and then you got to do a whole lot of explaining but uh, <laughs> if, if, you, if in fact you can do that um, but the the thing about karma that I found interesting, because all I knew was what goes around comes around, right? You want to put mm-hmm. good stuff out there. And I always, always did that because I felt like my children coming along, even before they came along, I thought, what good stuff out there so that, you know, like stuff in the bank, good, you know, deposits in the bank might need a withdrawal every now and then mm-hmm. <laughs> in your future. Uh, but as I was listening to the Buddhas and some, uh, they talk about good karma and bad karma. Now that in the traditional, um, you don't have good karma and bad karma like that, you know, separated. Mm -hmm. So they were talking about, you know, there is, first of all, in Buddhism, there is no creator God. So you got to go in, you got to really wrap your mind around that so that you can understand what they're saying. 
like it or not, you don't have to believe it. It's just what it is, right? So they says no creator God is going to come in and help you with your like bad karma is coming to get you. Right, going to save you're you from your, your bad karma. Right, you're getting your come up and so to speak. No, there's no creator God is going to do that. So I'm thinking, well, you're in deep sneakers, you know. So the idea, I guess, is is sort of to balance the good with the bad. But they said that the good karma is like fresh water. And so you just try to fill your, I guess, your life, whatever, with fresh water so that if you, you know, put a little bad karma out there, it just kind of gets absorbed, diluted, you know. And this is just my way of saying it using, you know, easy language. But mm -hmm. that's the idea. So I want to know what Ernest Holmes would say and, you know, how's that go? Because I didn't have time to go back and get my book and look it up again. Okay. Well, uh, the notion of karma, uh, especially the Buddhist notions of karma, is that um, we are on a merry-go-round where we go through life and then we go through life again and we go through life again. And at some point we graduate from whatever level we've been on and we get to go up to the next level and eventually we're done with life on earth and we get to go to whatever the next higher plane of existence is. And perhaps there are some passes through here where we are at a lower level of consciousness, uh, whether we're d d manifesting in, in, in physical form as some, actually, I think uh, Abraham Hicks said that it's not like you are here as a dog. It's probably you're here as a pack of dogs or a flock of birds as the consciousness it's it's much less differentiated than we necessarily think. Uh, simply reminding me that it's none of our business. What Ernest Holmes said was that there is one life, and that is everlasting life, and it is expressing itself in multiple forms. So everything that exists, every life, is that one life taking its own particular form. And karma would be all of the lives and all of the consciousness that's happened previously. And our current experience is based on the consciousness that we are here with now. And we all think that we're in control of our thoughts and control of our minds, and it's simply not true. There are things that we believe that we don't know why we believe them. There are other things we believe, and we just take them as assumptions that that must be true because everybody knows that that's true. And that's the the consciousness of the planet. That's the belief of the race. It's race consciousness. That's what we as a human race believe. And we will continue to believe that and, um, and enact that until we have a different belief. So karma is working at a, um, uh, at a, a civilization wide level and it's working at an individual level. And it's none of our business. What happens to our individual consciousness once we make our transition and go back to wherever it was that we came from. Do we remain individualized? Ernest Holmes seemed to indicate that we do remain individualized. I have the notion that it's probably a lot less individual. Uh, that's the idea of the one, as that we go back into the oneness and we can individualize ourselves. It's just a matter of, you know, having memory or it's like there's a that old sweater that's sitting in your drawer that you wore, you know, all the time when you were at that age and now you don't wear it anymore. It's the same kind of thing. It's like, it's still there, but it doesn't define who you are anymore. And the karma is all energetic. It's all about the law of attraction. It is all about creating the environment that we live in. If we live lovingly, then we will tend to attract more loving experiences. If we are attuned to experiences of prosperity and generosity, then what happens is we tend to live in a world that has generosity and prosperity. And oh, by the way, that means that people are going to be generous with us and we're going to experience prosperity ourselves. Because the universe, the infinite creative power that creates everything doesn't care. It loves us so much that it doesn't care whether we have an abundance of prosperity or an abundance of profit, of poverty. So we are free to choose. And one last comment that I'll throw in there before you say, that's a lot. <laughs> Me, because no, I won't. He just goes. He said, "Say that's a lot now." <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> it, that is a lot. That's a lot. All right. So, yeah, I, I, I. That is so much. I was trying to figure out which part of the lot I want to go back to. 
um, pe- Ernest Holmes, you're, you're saying Ernest Holmes says that when we leave this life and we're, we'll go out of this life to wherever we're going and we'll still be sort of like the old sweater in the drawer kind of thing. He says we'll still be individualized. So whatever our individual, our personal consciousness is, everything that we are now will continue on. And he, he implies that if we reincarnate, it'll be the same consciousness incarnating one more time. And I'm, that's the part I don't necessarily agree with. It's like, yeah, we can come back, but we don't necessarily have to be wearing the yellow sweater. Yeah. Now that brings up a lot of things that I had read some years ago about that. So if we go leave this uh, life and then we just become one of the whole, then that kind of says we're not coming back or we got to come back again. I I don't know. Like if you just leave and become the whole, do you not come back anymore? Or do you have to go through a whole thing to individuate again and then come back? Because everything that I've read, which is not everything to be read, let me say that. No, they keep um, on writing more stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I haven't even read everything that's out there now. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I'm always working on it. Um, we leave and we're like the old sweater and we come back and we do something with it. We update it or upgrade it or whatever, you know. That kind of makes nice sense in a sense. You know, there's... With this life I have right now, okay, so I'll come back as a sweater because I got a few things I'd like to upgrade, Mm -hmm. fix, be nice. Um, But there's some like to re-individuate. I don't even know if that's a word, but to re to come back something. No, I'm not interested in coming back as anything else. But what I am here right now, you know, because I know this. Well, yeah, but yeah. if if when once you take off this costume, once you leave this particular movie theater, then perhaps it's no longer relevant. So it's like going to see, uh, you know, episode three of that the, the the movie series that you love, and all you want to do is go back into the theater so that you can continue the same story. But there's another story going on in the next theater and there's different stuff going out on the street and there's life that's going on around there and there are schools and universities and churches and carnivals and all the rest of that. And thinking that I need to be in this movie theater watching this particular story over and over and over again is putting a huge limitation on the possibilities that we have. You know what? That brings up something really important that I was thinking about. Music. I love music and there are some huge, like the, the idea of the arts. I can see God so, so clearly um, manifesting through the arts, either mm-hmm. the visual arts, performing arts, whatever it is. So let's say an enormous talent has left this planet, left this life, this life space. I always wonder what happens to that extraordinary talent. Because it's, it seems like every now and then, every few generations, some mega, mega extraordinary talent appears and then it goes away. What happens to that talent? You know, it's like the old sweater. I just cannot fathom that that old sweater is not, you know what I mean? It's not because it's just too amazing, too beautiful not to show up somewhere again. I have a rose bush in front of my house and it's got these beautiful pink roses on it and they're there now and they're wonderful and they add a lovely fragrance and a burst of color and they're roses. They're great. They're, they seem so delicate and dainty and yet they're so (laughs) well-armed to defend themselves. And eventually what will happen is the roses will fall off the bush And then it'll be a barren little bush and it'll just be this thorny thing that sits there for a while. And then what'll happen is eventually it'll bloom again. And I think that's the same thing that happens is the talent shows up and it blossoms and then it goes away and then it comes back and it blossoms in a different way in a different time. I mean, it's the same rose bush, but it's, it's a different time and space. So, well, the space is similar. Um, But I, I 
think that's what it is. When we turn our attention, instead of, oh, let's, it's all about the rose bush, it's all about me and my life and my yellow sweater, if we turn our attention to the foundational belief that there's one divine power and presence, one life, one love, one source that's sharing itself as its creation, then what happens is it blossoms as a rose bush over here, and then that blossom goes away, and then the tulips come up over there, and we can look at them and say, those are different, those are separate, that's a rose, that's a tulip, don't you know the difference? But if we look at the big picture, it is the one sharing itself in different ways. So nothing's lost, nothing goes away, and that's something that, that Ernest Holmes is very clear about is that it's a recycling program rather than a discard program. Exactly. That's that's exactly what I I think. Because I can't imagine beauty just going away, you know. And and it shows up in a lot of different ways. Of course, there's music that one may prefer over another genre mm. of music. But it's actually it's still beautiful. It's just, you know, my what I like and what you like. But sometimes you just can't imagine that. I just can't imagine at any point that it's not going to resurface somewhere. Because it would just be, it would be a waste. Um, it would be sad. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I do not believe that there is a spiritual landfill that stuff gets dumped into. I think it's much more of a spiritual ecosystem. Let's take a break. And afterwards, we will talk about a belief that is held in common by almost all of the world's religions. Learn to put practical prayer to work in your life. The steps are simple to learn and let you begin to get real results to create the life of your dreams immediately. Reverend Bill Marcioni's widely acclaimed book, Practical Prayer for Real Results, gives you a clear summary of the new thought principles behind practical prayer and the series of easy to understand steps found in the most effective prayers from religions and spiritual practices all over the world and throughout history. Practical prayer is not a replacement for your religion or practice. It's a technique to make the work you do in consciousness even more effective. The book includes 40 prayers on various topics that you can adapt as needed and use as your own. Practical Prayer for Real Results is available in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook on Amazon or at b-the-light.com. Dot com. That's b the lightcom Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni, and um, you're going to talk about something that goes throughout. A belief that's held by almost all of the world's religions, mm-hmm. and it's in common, and we don't necessarily think of them as being that important, or it as being that important, because everybody kind of claims it once. Um, uh, Zoroastrianism says the nature only is good when it shall not do unto another whatever is not good for its own self. Mm-hmm. You're probably seeing where that's going. In Judaism, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And it shows up in Hinduism. Men gifted with intelligence should always treat others as they themselves wish to be treated. Taoism, regard your neighbor's gain as your own gain and regard your neighbor's loss as your own loss. Mm-hmm. The golden rule. Mm-hmm is a fundamental core assumption not even a belief it's an instruction it's it's a it's core to to all of these religions because innately we know and by the way that's karma exactly that's karma do unto others as you would have done unto you because if you you look at it karmically it's going to get done unto you (laughs) somebody else is going to do it and it might not even be somebody else because energetically since there's only one we're doing it we're doing it to ourselves Mm-hmm. We are mm-hmm. doing it to ourselves. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I think that's such a that's left out, and that's such an important part of the the whole picture. That if I treat you badly, okay, I can walk away from that, but I'm really doing it to myself, and that's the piece that is left out of the the teaching or the explanation. Um, what goes around comes around okay yeah that's a nice thing but when you wear that you know and I used to use the term a lot when I was teaching um, Bible studies you've got to wear the scripture you got to you know put your shoes on and put your sandals on and walk in the dust and wear that which was said and understand what that really means Uh, so what goes around comes around is a nice 
cliche if you just want to throw it out there. But what about, the, <laughs> you know, what about the, the come around part? You want good to come back to you. Yeah. You want good to come back to your family. You know, there's a, um, I told you I did this series, this ridiculously long series. Oh, yeah. With all <laughs> and, the different characters from the Bible. Oh, uh, yeah. And I did one that I didn't plan to do recently on Aiken. And um, Aiken was in the book of Joshua, and he was just stealing and doing stuff, you know, taking devoted stuff and hiding it and whatever. So that's one man, okay? Nowadays, you would take that one guy and you'd prosecute him, put him in prison, and he serves the time. Mm -hmm. Back then, they took him, his wife, his kids, everybody associated with him outside the gates of the city and stoned him to death. Now, and I chuckle at that, and I don't mean to, but... Um, <laughs> hey, stone to death, let's have a laugh. Know, when, I first, <laughs> when I first read it, I'm like, well, why would they do that? But then it doesn't take long to realize that what you do comes around to you, but also to everybody else concerned, everybody else that's close. Mm -hmm. Do you want that to happen? It's like, and, and so that's a level of consciousness or awareness to me. It's not just me, it's, it's us. So what I'm putting out there, it's going to hit me, but what about the person next to me? You know, and if that's too much for you to handle, what about the people you love? You yeah. Know, that, well, I think the way that strict, the, the way scripture tells those stories, you know, there's what's the consciousness of the crowd that's taking the entire family outside the, the, the gates and stoning the children to death. I mean, there's, there's something positive to be said for cleansing our consciousness and uh, creating a clear field that is not going to be contaminated by any of the stuff from whatever Aiken is involved in. Uh, but to explain it in such a harsh framework of, you know, murdering children, just uh, it, it can be distracting from the spiritual truth, I think. Um, yes and no. Okay. <laughs> yes. I... Are you going to come out in favor of stoning children? Because this is going to be fun. No. I, okay. If good. You take it, if you take it literally, <laughs> that's a that's a rough, you know, thing. I mean, it it appears again in Psalms, where they you, they crush the heads of babies and all of that. I mean, if you're going to take it literally, no. And if you take it literally, why even be bothered with the Bible? Because you can't say, <laughs> well, I'm going to take this part and not this part. Look, you got to. And that's what made me early on say, well, now, wait a minute. I don't want to throw the whole thing away. So let me reexamine the way I'm looking at this. This is a story illustrating a point, a difficult point. Yes, something that's really strong. I may not even like it, but it's put in a language that gets your attention. Right. If Aiken is, and his whole family are getting destroyed over what he did, okay, that's bad. But the point is, it's Aiken. We got to look at him. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, let's fast forward to where you and I are now. Everything we do affects our family. You know, people will say, well, I, I'm going to use this word sin. Okay, one day we're going to talk about that. But <laughs> so, <laughs> not that was going to be today, but it's not gonna, we're not going to get that much time in today. Okay, but, you know, you, people say, well, when I sin, I sin alone. Ridiculous. No, you don't. You know, you may put it out there, but when it comes back around, even if you could do it by yourself comes back around other people are affected by everything we do mm -hmm. so i you know that's why i think when i said yes and no yeah it's hard but what's the point here and and if you get to it that's what changes your life i think looking at what it really means yeah well those stories in scripture and some people say everything is completely literal and those are completely true stories and then there are other folks who say they're stories they're parables uh, is there any indicator in the Bible that perhaps they are indeed parables? No, not, I mean, there's no... <laughs> How about when Jesus said, when they said, why do you talk in parables? And he says, because people don't get it when I speak straight. <laughs> I mean, you know, you could read it and from cover to cover and you'll say, this is, this is a parable. And some of it I look and think, I hope this was a parable, you know, like, I hope this really didn't happen. My preference is to look at it as a parable. That way you get the truth of it and not get hung up on, oh my God, it's terrible. They stoned his whole family and missed the whole point. 
Yeah. And and wouldn't it be unfortunate if you were Lot's wife and you got punished by getting turned into a pillar of salt because of something he did? Yeah, well, you know. You know. That, when, when you look at it from... <laughs> wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> Trust me, <laughs> sound laughing, right? <laughs> okay, so from a personal development standpoint perspective... It wasn't what Lot did, it's what she did. She turned around and she looked back. That's not what you do. That's what happens to you when you look back in your life. You become useless, pillars, all, all that. I mean, it sounds bad, but when you look at what the meaning of these things are, hey, yeah, come on, life ain't that difficult. I agree. I agree. And um, as, as far as karma is concerned, I love the notion of karma. And it can be instantaneous. You have seen somebody do something uh, either whacked or wonderful and have it come back to them immediately. Mm -hmm. I have a quick story. I used to travel on business a lot. So I would uh, get on the airplane and I was in preferred whatever it was so I could get on the airplane first. So I'm sitting on the plane and, you know, had my aisle seat and... uh, they're finally, they're fill, filling up the plane and this woman comes in with a toddler in her arms and there's a middle seat that's open next to me and there's a, another, and so basically she says, oh, my toddler and I don't have seats together and she's asking the flight attendant for help, what can we do? And they're like looking around, is anybody willing to sit in a middle seat so that my, my baby and I can sit together? And I said, sure, I'll do that. And so, of course, it's me wedged in between two uh, heavy guys, you know, with no leg room and no elbow room and all the rest of it. And, of course, the flight attendant was very grateful and the woman was very grateful and they got themselves settled in. And we start taxiing and and I'm thinking, <laughs> squeezed in as a flight home from Chicago. It's like, all right, this is going to be a while, but I'm so glad that I was able to do something helpful and wonderful and put that positivity out into the world. We're still taxiing. The flight attendant uh, comes back and says, as soon as we take off, can you come up to first class? Because we've got a seat for you. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) So, and that's, I didn't do it because I wanted to fly home in first class. I did it because that's what I was putting out. And the karma was instantaneous. And the people around me who had been like looking in opposite directions and not making eye contact while this poor woman is looking for a place for her child to sit are looking at me and now they're being jealous. It's like... You go to town, gang. <laughs> Have a nice time and let me know how that's going for you. Yeah, it does work like that sometimes. Yep. But, you know, there's other times when um, when I know it's going to be okay. That's knowing how it works. And when you put the word law in front of it, <laughs> I'm really like, I'm happy then because I'm thinking, okay, I don't have to worry about this. This is going to be exactly good and 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 the good is going to come at just the right time when i need it yep yeah. let's take another break and upon a resumption of the program we will do a practical prayer and it's going to have something to do with karma okay get inspiration in an instant God Calls are the gentle and uplifting moment of truth to help you remember that the bright light of God's love is shining right now as you. It's your God Call with Rev. Bill. Start your two-week free trial today and you'll get a phone call four times a week from Rev. Bill with an uplifting half-minute message filled with insight, wisdom, story, and fun. Let your light shine. You can answer the call to listen to it live or let it go to voicemail so you can hear it later. After the free trial, your subscription is just five ninety five a month. The details are at godcall.org. God calls are disruptive, intentionally. Whenever you write something, put on a gold star. They take you away from your routine to remind you about the truth of who you really are. They come at random times between 8.15 a.m. and 6 p.m., so you won't be expecting them. And somehow, the message is exactly what you need to hear at the time. Magic is loose in the world. It's a moment of motivation in the middle of your day. Find out more and start your two-week free trial now at GodCall.org. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, here with Rev. Dr. Bill Marcioni, having a marvelous conversation about karma. We're talking about karma. And it's... 
we can think of karma in so many many different ways it's you know you get back what you put out what you you reap what you sow what goes around comes around law of attraction all the rest of that stuff and 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 it all it's it's working it's always working mm -hmm. uh and to my way of thinking one of christianity's great contributions is original sin which basically means that you start off uh down a point with the karma <laughs> 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 just a point <laughs> well no matter what you do you're starting out you're, you're starting out down and and you got to do something to get yourself back up to sea level i don't know personally that doesn't make any sense to me but then again um I'm, neither of us are currently in that tradition very deeply at this point so in a prayer about karma what we are going to look at is not the experience that we are looking for what we are looking at instead is who we are what we're bringing to life what we're bringing to experience to let that be what's attracting to activate the law of attraction if i want more love in my life i'm not going to be saying i'm praying for love i'm going to pray to embody love more fully to be that love to be that light to be that presence to attract that love into my life the same thing with prosperity if i'm looking for prosperity it's not about getting it's about being in the flow of prosperity about giving and receiving that's why tithing is such an important prosperity practice it's about giving it's about keeping that flow going so that we can be part of that it's the same law of attraction it's that same karmic energy that's flowing that way creativity you were talking about music earlier it's about appreciating and sharing whatever it is that we have that way to support the music or the art or the creativity that's in the world around us and that way more of it comes in either through our own creative work or because we are inspiring and uplifting and supporting other people who are doing their creative work health is it, it, it always works it always works so that's the prayer today is to activate the law of attraction to bring that which we are desiring more fully into our lives by more fully embodying it I invite everybody who's listening to bring to mind whatever experience you'd prefer to have, whatever would make your life feel richer and sweeter and more connected and more prosperous and more loving and more vital and vibrant, whatever that feeling is that you are seeking, whatever it is that you're desiring, how is it that you can more fully be that gift? How is it that you can more fully embody that? What is it that you are giving off? What is it that you are sharing with the world that allows you to be in that karmic flow, to allow you to activate the law of attraction? Because the truth is there is one power, one divine power and presence that shares itself as all of its creation. Everything is that one taking particular form. And as described, that includes each one of us. We are each individually and all together that divine essence taking its own particular form and all of those things that we are seeking all of those experiences that we are desiring all of those flows of karmic energy that we are inviting include us include each of us so we are inviting that newness and freshness into our world by embodying the good that we wish to experience by releasing that which is no longer serving us if we're looking outside of ourselves and saying i want to have more of that we're looking in the wrong place what we do instead is say this is the experience that i wish to be having how may i more fully embody that how may i allow myself to more fully be that bright light of goodness that i'm seeking to experience more fully and be filled with it not by having it pour down on top of us by but by having it well up within us and the good fills us in whatever way we are describing it as creativity as love and relationships as health and vitality as prosperity and abundance that richness and that sweetness is filling us and overflowing and we continue to share it with the world we give to prime the pump and then we receive and then we give some more and we receive and we give some more and we are in the flow that up leveling of love and consciousness that brings more and more good into our experience and the good is whatever way we're describing it we need not agree on what good means it's good for us understanding it to be good for those around us and that good is flowing now i'm so grateful for it I'm grateful for the good. I'm grateful for the stories. I'm grateful for the richness and the joy that's unfolding in each of our lives. 
and I am grateful to be able to speak this word of intention and release it into that creative law that has always said yes. That one creative force that has created everything is now creating this. There is nothing in the universe that stands in the way of it. This good is underway now. And so I let it be. And so it is. The Practical Prayer Podcast with Rev. Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence is a production of BeTheLight.com. Be-the-light.com. Where you can find more information about practical prayer for real results. Our theme is by Music of Wisdom. You can learn about the spiritual community of New Thought Philadelphia with daily guided meditations, weekly celebrations of spirit, and Rev. Bill's classes in practical spirituality at NewThoughtPhilly.org. And now, just as a reminder, we are still live on Facebook and YouTube doing doing the post show. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. I knew that. You knew that. I knew you I knew did. that. But I, I I'm just it. I'm being redundant. That's me. I'm just saying That's things cool. that don't That's need to cool. be said again. No, don't never think that. <laughs> 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 I I have a friend who helps, who keeps my world in order. Um, in terms of the work and every morning when I wake up by a certain time there's an email with everything perfectly ordered that I'm supposed to do based on stuff we talked about and um, I thought I was taking care of my life before I, she stepped into my world to do this now I'm thinking if she ever gets mad at me, <laughs> do this all. What the <laughs> so, so here's my point, right? She'll say things and she's so sweet about the way she does it because she doesn't want to say anything that, you know, I'd say, well, I knew that already. I said, listen, don't even think that I know anything, right? Just <laughs> don't assume that I figured it out and I'm going to do that. Just tell me. All right, and I will appreciate it because I can tell you nine times out of ten, I forgot. So, thank you so much. So, I'm telling you, you the same thing. Go ahead and say it. It works. Yeah, I've had the same sort of thing. Our digital media coordinator for New Thought Philadelphia and I were both looking at the meetup group and both noticed that we're about a thousand people in the meetup group. Um, we first started doing our digital media campaign two years ago, a year and a half ago. There were 200, and so it's growing. Uh, remarkably and both of us noticed that and both of us forgot to say anything <laughs> <laughs> you know what because you can get so bogged down with the doing that if you miss those kind of things and those are the gratitude moments i think those are the little things that make you think well this yeah is, yeah this is what it yep. is this is why i'm doing this and by the way i'll put that out to this audience as well it's uh, on meetup.com it's philly spiritual adventures and uh, that's where we announce all of the daily meditations, twice a day, 8 o'clock uh, in the morning and 6 in the afternoon, Monday through Friday, plus a couple times on the weekends we do these meditations, 15 minutes. And lately we've been having from people from all over the world. You know, there's somebody who's jumping in from Milwaukee, but then there's somebody who's in New Orleans, and then there's even farther away. There's somebody coming in from Arizona, and then, oh, now there's a guy from Scotland, and he's not even the farthest one because somebody's in from from London. I you just, know, and it's just I'm spreads out. fascinated by that, you know, because... I'm, you know, loving that stuff. Yeah, well, somebody drops in from Mapsecan, too. I mean, it's not yep. maybe not as exciting as London or all those other places, but yeah, I think that's amazing because you know that it's like they're coming because they're being attracted and the one mind is saying like, it's something here you need to hear today. Yeah. I don't have anything against Deb Seekin, by the way. I did a bumper sticker for the spiritual community I was part of in Moorestown, New Jersey that said, God is everywhere, even in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> It, I keep, I've lived in New Jersey for almost 25 years now, and I still am not from New Jersey. Oh, no yeah, offense, yeah, yeah. New Jersey, you know, but it's just not like Absecon is wonderful. It's it's just really sweet in so many ways, but it's just 
You know, I'm, I'm used In to the Jersey. sizzle. Yeah, just, I'm used to the sizzle. And I'm the opposite. I, I grew up in New Jersey and then moved to Pennsylvania when I was in my 20s. So I'm still a transplant to Pennsylvania. It's not nearly as bad as it was in South Carolina. I was there for six months and it's like, no, you're never going to be a native here. <laughs> <laughs> they, they didn't call me Yankee, but it's because they, they had Southern hospitality. They knew it. They knew it. They, they they're talking about. People know. I, my birthday was about a week or so ago, I guess. And happy and, uh, birthday again, by the way. Thank you. So my daughter sent me some white sneakers, totally inbred, in, you know, what, embossed or whatever, with rhinestones. These things are fabulous. <laughs> 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 they are so absolutely me. It's just crazy. And so I posted it on Facebook and everybody was saying, yeah, that's you, that's you. And I'm thinking now, where am I going to wear these? I mean, I'm going to wear them. Right. Oh, yeah. I got to go somewhere else to wear them because like, I'll just look stupid wearing them around here in Absecon. This is just not rhinestone sneaker territory. Although okay. I love it. Yeah. Well, road trip. Yeah. So, road trip. you know, I, I got a little bag for them and everything. Right. So when I go somewhere, maybe New York, Philly, Washington, someplace like that. And maybe that's exactly what we've been talking about. They are they're your hidden splendor that you get to keep in the bag, and then they get to blossom at exactly the perfect moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you take them out of the bag, and they make this noise of their own going, ta-da! 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 <laughs> Here are the shoes. When I opened the box, you know, they came. This is Whoops. just so me. It was like, you know, that part of me that got forgotten came in a box and said, yeah, you're still here. I love it. White rhinestone sneakers. Perfect. All right. Well, that is a wrap. Thank you so much. I'm going to click the button over here, and we will pick this up again next week. Okay. Good.